was a kid, there was a thing that was called King for a Day. If you were made the king for the day, you got all of the decision-making power for that day. It was a great gift to receive. Well, for our message in a minute this morning, we're looking at a king for a day, except it wasn't a good thing. There were many kings in Israel, and one that often we don't even think of as being king was a man who was one of the most impressive individuals that we know of in Scripture. When you look at him, he had all of the giftedness. Here was a young man who, when he came up, he was considered to be one of the best looking people you have ever seen. In fact, in 2 Samuel, it is declared of him that from head to toe, there was not a blemish on him. When it came to his position in life, he was the son of a king. He was born into a position of great authority. And more than that, his relationship with his father, even though there were many other brothers, and even though scripture doesn't tell us specifically, there is something in his relationship with his father that anytime they're apart, the father mourns for him. He had a special position with his father. He had incredible good looks and he had great influence. When he was a little bit older, he decided he was going to work the situation to his benefit. Now, he'd been doing it much of his life, earlier in his life, a situation that happened between his brother and sister. He kind of worked that one. Then, a couple years later, another time, he wanted revenge on that brother. So he goes to his dad and he works his dad a little bit. He'd gotten good at influencing people. And now, as a young adult, he sits at the gate of his father's kingdom. And as individuals came to see his father, he would pull them aside and say, Oh, the king doesn't have time for you, but I can help. And the Bible tells us that Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. You see, Absalom was a gifted individual, the son of King David. He had the looks. He had the position. He had the influence. He ends up making himself king. He calls everyone together in Hebron, declares himself king, even though his father was still on the throne. He then proceeds to go into Jerusalem and to run David out of the kingdom. When he's there in his kingdom, the character trait that helped him rise to the position of power also took that power away. You see, Absalom's great character trait was arrogance. It, it wasn't great in the sense of a benefit to him. It was great and it was defining of him. He was arrogant enough to think he knew better than his brother. He was arrogant enough to think he knew better than his father. When a general wouldn't respond to him, he was arrogant enough to think he deserved it. He goes in and he wins the hearts of the people because he was arrogant enough to believe he should be king. He runs his father out. But then in his arrogance, he performs a public immoral act to prove his position of authority. He then doesn't listen to the wisest of counsel, and instead, he makes a poor decision. And in his arrogance, he doesn't go after his father when he should have. And as a result, God protects David, and Absalom loses everything. His arrogance lifted him up. His arrogance tore him down. Because God resists the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. In Absalom's life, a haughty spirit came before destruction. For all of us, we have to be careful of our own arrogance. The gifting that we have in our lives from God is something we should treasure, something we should develop, and something we should use. But we must always remember that it is simply a gift from God that can be taken in a moment. Never be arrogant in what God has given you. Absalom didn't learn that lesson. It brought him success, but it also brought him ultimate destruction. Let it be that the gifts that we have do not create an arrogance in us, but instead create in us an opportunity to serve our God and bring glory to his name. I'm Larry Wright, and this has been a message in a minute.